Hello, in this video I will explain you all the math and science behind the sequence of f-stopped numbers in photography. You know, those numbers that correspond to the aperture size like f2.8, f4, f5.6 and so on. Why this sequence is so seemingly weird, how to memorize it and where those numbers actually come from. So let's get started. Alright, so at first let me show you a quick way to memorize those f sub number sequence that is easy to understand and easy to memorize by most people. So you start with two numbers, you start with f1 and f1.4 and then in order to generate the next one you just take the number that precedes the previous number which is f1 in this case and double it, so you get f2. So the next number is f2. Then you take this number, double it, you get f2.8 then double this number to get f4, double this to get f5.6, f8, then double that to get 11.1, .1, which we ran down to f11, which is f11, f16, and so on if you wish so. But now the real question is, why do we start with f1 and f1.4 and why does it work that if we take the number that precedes the previous number and double it, you get the next number in the sequence? Why does this work? In this video we are going to answer this exact question. Why those rules work for the sequence of f sub numbers? So the first thing to realize and very important to understand is that the aperture is a physical opening in the lens which has a shape of a circle. So if you draw a circle like this, this is pretty much how an aperture inside the lens looks like. And if you are stopping down or up the lens, what actually means for the exposure in photography is that if you stop down a lens, for instance from f2.8 to f4, you're letting in half the amount of light into the sensor that you would in the same amount of time at f2.8. And if you're going up a stops, for instance from f2.8 to f2, then you are letting double the amount of light in the same period of time. So how the size of this circle correspond to the amount of light that reaches the sensor in the same unit of time? Well, it's really hard to say, but what's easy to say that if we had two circles like this, we would be letting exactly double the amount of light in the same unit of time, right? And what do those two circles have in common? Well, they have doubled the area of this original circle. So an area of a circle, if we take double the area, we are letting in double the amount of light in the same unit of time. And that's crucial to realize for our reasoning. And also, the definition of the f-stop number, so those numbers right here, is that f equals l divided by d, where l is the focal length of your lens and d is the diameter. And the diameter is just double the radius. So right here, this is the diameter and this is the radius. And also, if you remember from high school, the equation that depicts the area of a circle is a equals pi times radius squared, where pi is the mathematical constant, which is roughly 3.14, and r is the radius of a circle, so this is this distance right here from the middle to the edge. We can write down the equation for the diameter, which is d equals 2 times r, and then what we need to do is we need to express the f-stop number as a function of the area, so we can reason about it. So in order to do it, we can substitute the diameter here, which leads us to this equation, f equals l divided by two r's. And right here we need to express the radius by a function of an area. So we can divide both sides of this equation by pi, which will lead us to a divided by pi equals radius squared. And then from that we can take a square root of both sides of the equation and land on the following formula. Radius equals square root of area divided by pi. And then we can just substitute the radius by this formula into this equation. So we get f stop equals focal length divided by 2 square root of area divided by pi. And that actually equals focal length divided by 2 times 1 divided by square root of area divided by square root of pi. And if we divide by something in the denominator, it's the same thing as multiplying the numerator by this number. So that gives us the definition of f stop number equals l times square root of pi divided by 2 times 1 over square root of an area. 
Well, that's a pretty complicated equation. And how will that lead us to this sequence? Well, let's try to define a few f stops. So for instance, we can write that f1, which is the first number in the sequence, equals l times square root of pi divided by two times one over square root of the first area. And actually this number, the l times square root of pi divided by two, we can treat it as a constant for simplicity because for this reasoning, the focal length is constant. So we can treat this as for instance, a variable called C. And then we can write that this is equals to C divided by square root of A1. Also, we can write that the second f step number F2 equals C divided by square root of A2. But now if we need to generate the second f step number, we are stopping down one stop. And if we are stopping down exactly one stop, we need the relationship between those two areas. We know that A2 is half the A1. Because if we take the half the area, then we will be letting in half the amount of light in the same unit of time. So if we substitute that into this equation, we get F2 equals C divided by square root of A1 divided by two, which is square root of two times C divided by square root of A1. And this, is actually F1, remember? So we can write the following formula, F2 equals square root of two times F1. And this is actually true for every F stop number in the sequence. So we can generalize to say that Fn equals square root of two times Fn minus one. And the square root of two is actually equal roughly 1.4142 so we can say that it roughly equals 1.4. And as you can see, the number 1.4 shows up also here in our f stop sequence. But now let's take a look what happens if we want to write a formula for f3. So we write f3 equals square root of two times f2, but f2 is square root of two times f1. So we can write square root of two times square root of two times f1 and square root of 2 times square root of 2 is actually 2. So that equals 2 times f1. So we can generalize and say that fn equals 2 times fn minus 2. And this is the second rule in our sequence because this rule says that the next f stop number is double the number that precedes the previous number. This is exactly what we had here, remember? And then the square root of two, which is roughly f1.4, gives us sort of the second number because if our f1 is equal one, if we start with this number, then look at that, f1 equals one, f2 equals square root of two times one, which is roughly 1.4. And then we can use this formula and basically generate the whole sequence of f stop numbers. And if you ask me why f1 is equal one, well, that's sort of an arbitrary choice, but if you are dealing with the so-called geometrical sequence, it doesn't really make sense to start with zero because you would have zero everywhere. So one is like the most intuitive and the simplest number to start from a geometrical sequence. And the f-stop number is definitely a geometrical sequence if you look at those definitions. All right, so that's basically all there is to it. Now you know why there is f1.4 right after f1 and why it works that if you take the number that precedes the previous number and double it, you get the next full f-stop number. So f1, f1.4, f2, then f2.8, etc, etc, etc. Now you know, now you understand. Go tell your friends, be the smart guy. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also leave a comment down below. Did you like this video? Do you want more breakdowns, scientific breakdowns about things related to photography? Or maybe it's just too nerdy. Let me know down below in the comments. And also consider subscribing to the channel because I post new videos pretty much every single week and I cover all topics related to photography and filmmaking. I make tutorials about Adobe products like Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, After Effects, etc. So consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on those videos. But that's it for now. Have a good day. See you next time and bye bye.